In this lesson, we are um, still working in section 8.3. Um, we are going to work on matching graphs with equations. So this is a four part lesson that we've been working on. Um, so it's four separate videos. So the first video you should have watched is what does A do? Second video is finding the vertex. The third video was graphing quadratics. And now this is the fourth video um, that is matching graphs with equations. Um, so normally when I teach this, um, I have a, a little bit of um, uh, more space to work with. Everybody has a book that we're looking on. So you will want to have your book while we're working on this. I am going to try and put these on the camera as much as I can, but it's easier if you have the book to flip the pages yourself. Um, so the directions state to match each graph with one of the equations. So we have eight graphs um, and eight equations. So what I recommend you do is number your paper one through eight. And then letters A through, I believe, H. That way, once we um, match one equation with one graph, we can go ahead and cross that out so we don't use the same equation twice. Um, so what I always tell my students to do, and huh, they decided they wanted to put all of these graphs on separate pages, so that makes uh, the difficulty increase just a little bit. Um, sorry about that. So if you look, we've got these four or six graphs here. And then I have two additional graphs here. And I always ask my students, what are the, what's the biggest difference that you see between these two graphs, um, these two pages of graphs? So normally y'all would say graphs one, that's viewed here, and graph seven, which is right here. And the reason that those are so different is because those are lines instead of this parabola shape here. So we're gonna start off working with graphs 1 and 7. Now what makes our graphs have this U shape is when we have an equation where the X is squared. That's how we get that U shape there. So we're going to try and find the equations that don't have that X squared. So if you take just a second to look, you'll see that C and F are the two equations where they are not the um, the squared. So we're looking at C here and F here. So we know the y-intercept is always this last number without the x. So the y-intercept here is 1 and if you look at F the y-intercept here is also 1. So that doesn't really help us. So we have to look at our slopes which is the number in front of the x here. We've got a 2 and a negative 2. So I'm going to give you guys a brief lesson to remember the difference between positive and negative slopes. Um, so if we start here on our graph, okay, so let's say this is our line. And we have a graph that starts here and throughout the year goes up and up and up and up. These are our profits, okay, throughout the year our profits are just increasing like this, okay. We are going to say that that is a positive statement because our profits started down here and they ended up here at the end of the year. So a graph that goes in this direction here is going to have a positive slope. So if we have this and our uh, profits start here and by the end of the year they go down here, well that's a negative statement. That means we're losing money. So that's how you know the difference between those two graphs. So we're looking for the one that is starts at the bottom left and goes up to the top right. So when we're looking at this graph and this graph, we're going to say that number 7 is the positive graph because it starts down here and it works its way up. So the positive slope would be C. So we say that number 7 is C. I'm going to cross my C out over here because we've already used it. So that means that number 1 should be F. Now let's check. Do the slopes match? Number 1, our slope starts up here, our graph starts up here and it goes in that downward direction. 
That's a negative statement. So F is going to be our answer here. So we're going to put an F for number one. We're going to cross this one out. So now we have six graphs that we have to compare with six different equations. So that narrows them down a little bit. Now, I want you guys to look and look at these six graphs. Now, notice that we are no longer looking right here. And we are no longer looking at this graph, which I'll cover on the other page. So we're looking for the biggest physical difference between these pages here, okay? Well, the biggest physical difference we see are numbers five and six. Notice that on five and six, they're all uh, facing downwards, and on the other ones, they're all facing upwards. So when a graph faces downward, we know that it is going to have a negative A. So we're looking at graphs five and six. So I'm gonna draw like a little circle on those, a five and a six, those are the ones we're looking at. And let's look at which equations have a negative A. Well, if you look, you'll see that E and H are those two equations that have the negative A value. So we're looking at E and H. So we know that these two are going to match with these two. We just don't know which is which first. So since all of these are on the same page, it'll be a little bit easier to see. Um, there is one other thing that we know to look at the equation for that tells us something that is very telling about our graph. Um, hopefully you've thought about it. That would be our y-intercept. We know that our y-intercept is always that uh, very last number without a variable. So our y-intercept here is a negative 8 for h. So when we look at these two graphs, well, it's kind of hard to tell, but it's very obvious that this graph does not cross at negative 8 down here. But this one, however, does. So number 5 is going to match with H. So I'm going to put an H next to my 5, and then I'm going to cross this H out. So that means that E should match with 6, but let's double check. So when we look at number six, crosses about right here, and if we look at E, well there is no y-intercept. There's no term here where there's not an x with it. So since that's the case, that means it's a zero, and it looks like number six matches at just about zero here. And if you're, you have a book in your hand, you can really see that it does cross at zero. It's just harder to see on this camera. So six does match with E. So I'm going to write that here, okay? So now we have four graphs left and four equations left. So I'm going to go ahead and cover up what we have now used. It'll just be a little bit easier for you guys just to visually see. So now, let me see if I can match this. Eh, not really. I was trying to do it so I could show you guys all four graphs, but it's not going to happen. But now we can look at all the rest of these graphs, and we can use uh, one of two different things. We could either use the um, y-intercept, or we could use the vertex, but the y-intercept is the easiest one to use. So we're going to look at graph A, or the uh, equation A, and it says that our graph crosses at a positive 2. So I'm going to look at all of these and see where it crosses it to. This is about a zero. This is at a negative number. This is at a negative number. But if we look at number eight, that does cross at about a two. So number eight is going to match A. So we're done with that page. So now we've got graphs 2, 3, and 4, and equations B, D, and G. Well, G crosses at negative 3, so when we look at these graphs that are left over, you'll notice that 3 matches with 
the negative 3y intercept. So we're going to say that number 3 is g. Number 2 crosses at a 0. So between our two uh, letters left over, B and D, the one that crosses at 0 would be D. So 2 is D. And so that means that number 4 should match with B. So let's see. So 4 crosses at about a negative 1, and the y-intercept is negative 1. So that means that it all checks out. And that is how you match an equation with a graph. I hope you have find, found this helpful. You should now be able to do your practice test. I uh, wish you the best of luck.